Hi, I'm Sean Bailey with the Philly Pops, and we're here today to talk about finding your sound on the clarinet. This can be a difficult task since there are so many effective ways of approaching the instrument, from a more centered tone like this one, to a perhaps warmer or rounder sound, like this one. And even tones that might be more appropriate for jazz. It's hard to say that there's one right way of making a tone on the instrument. However, I think it can be very helpful to practice objective things about our playing. That means aspects of our playing that are quantifiable. Things like pitch, response, can you get a note to come out just when you intend? And focusing on getting an even sound quality throughout various registers from low to high and dynamic ranges from soft to loud. Through these series of exercises, I hope to give us an opportunity just to continue to train our ears to listen with greater detail at the sounds that are coming out of our instruments. This first arpeggio exercise can be very helpful for practicing our pitch, especially when you play with a drone or a tuner. It's designed in such a way that we're leading towards a strong beat, so instead of playing increasing to a downbeat, counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. That means each of the vertices of the shape we're creating occur on a strong beat. A little trick to help us phrase through this is to flip our numbers around so that instead we're counting four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four that helps us continue to create direction towards downbeats as we progress through this exercise. Otherwise, it's easy to slip into phrasing towards a beat that's already happened, which is harder to, to create a nice sense of direction on. As you play through this exercise, just be cognizant of what's actually coming out of your instrument. And if you record yourself or have a friend listen to you, you may find out that certain notes jump out much more than you think. For instance, when we get up into the higher register, some of those high notes may want to come out louder. And so our job as the clarinetist is to overcome those imperfections of the instrument by modulating our air. Um, and so to try and standardize the, both the dynamic and the tone quality coming out of the instrument, I might just use a little bit less air on that high note. Another helpful thing to practice is response, or our ability to have a sound come out right when we intend for that sound to come out. <laughs> there are a couple little technical tricks we can work on. The first is your clarinet angle, and that's how high you're holding the clarinet when you're playing, which impacts the point at which your bottom lip is touching the reed. A higher angle means your lip will probably be closer to the tip of the reed, which might mean less if the reed is engaged or buzzing while you're playing. 
A lower angle might mean that too much is redispersing, which could lead to a harsher, uncontrolled sound. That might sound like this. If you bring your angle out too far, and not enough for the reed is buzzing, your sound can get a little timid, weak, um, muffled, or just out of control. So a great exercise is um, try starting a note, especially in the clarion range, where I find that changes in timbre are a little more obvious as they happen. Start all the way up here, and as you're playing the note, bring your angle down until it's a little past where you're comfortable, bring it back up, and try and find that sweet spot. It's something worth practicing every couple days, as this angle might change over time. It's unique to each of us as our, our bone structure is all different. Um, and you'll find that each reed tends to have kind of a perfect point at which our lower lip should be touching the reed. On this particular reed, if I move my contact point a little too close towards the tip, I can really muffle my sound even without changing where my angle is. Another great way of working on our response is to become more familiar with exactly how much pressure we need to put on the reed in order for the reed to make a sound. We can start one note at a time, just only with our wind. Um, so try forming an embouchure, just not using any pressure on the reed. And then gradually add pressure until we feel that note start to come out. find that each note tends to have a specific amount of pressure that's required from the embouchure for the note to respond. Those subtle changes throughout the instrument can help us feel more confident that a note will come out right when we mean for it to. Finally, we can use a technique involving our fingers to help avoid finger smacking get in the way of an otherwise beautiful sound quality. If I were to use very legato, smooth air, and a perfect embouchure, well, perfect, but smack my fingers too hard, it could totally disrupt the character I'm aiming to achieve. So this next exercise seeks to get us a little more familiar with exactly how much pressure we need to put just in order to push a key or to get our finger to close a hole. Uh, the exercise is called legato fingers, and each time we're going to push a key, we're just going to raise our fingers up first to get them moving and totally in control as we travel that whole path from key open to key pushed. Before we lift fingers up, we're just going to push in a little bit and then release nice and slow. As you feel more comfortable with your fingers being in control, I try focusing on the beginning and the end of each note. It's okay to spend 20 or 30 minutes or even a couple hours with this exercise at once, as the simplicity of it acts as a lens through which we can observe little nuances about our sound with far greater clarity and in more detail.
Well, I hope these exercises provide us with a little bit of insight into some steps we can take towards finding our own sound. Remember that each of you should and can sound completely different from each other. Um, a good sound is a result of your own influences, the influence of your teacher, and most importantly, a sense of conviction and a well-practiced and reinforced relationship between you and your instrument. Good luck.